Hi, welcome to Tips on Teens. Today's question is gonna be dealing with uh, the right of every teen and child to have confidentiality in their session, even when parents wanna know what's going on. My name is Kent Toussaint. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I run two organizations here in Woodland Hills, California. The first is a group private practice called uh, Teen Therapy Center, and the other one is a non profit organization called Child and Teen Counseling. Both work to help uh, kids, teens, and families. All right, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, I answer your parenting questions, and this is no different. And this is our last Tips on Teens of the Year. The next two Wednesdays, I'll be out for the holidays. We'll pick back up on January 8th. But today, we have the question of the day. Here we go. Why can't I know what my kid says in therapy? How am I supposed to help if her therapist keeps me in the dark. It feels like they are making me out to be the bad guy, but how am I supposed to make things better if I don't know what's going on? Her therapist won't tell me a thing. How is this helping? It's a good question. Um, I think a lot of parents can relate to this. When uh, our kids go into therapy, it can create a lot of anxiety and frustration in us. We want to things get better. In this situation, the way this parent describes it, it sounds like there's some tension between this parent and this child, this daughter. Um, and it sounds like you want to resolve this. You want to get on this and resolve it. You want to, when she gets out of therapy, you want to you know, drive home and have a happy conversation. Um, unfortunately, it sounds like she's not there yet. And I encourage you to be patient with the process. Uh, here's the reason why kids uh, need to have that confidentiality, even if you're paying the bill, even if it's your kid. And I get why that's frustrating because it's your kid and you want to know what's going on, you want to help. So as a child therapist, uh, I am not an authority figure. I don't make your kid brush their teeth. I don't make them do their homework. Um, I don't come down and be that authority figure that says they must do something. Um, and that gives me an advantage that I can just connect and befriend them and where they feel safe and they can just open up and talk and not feel judged. Um, and parents, as all of us do, we will judge sometimes. It's just inherent in being a parent. We want our kids to do their homework. We want our kids to pick up their shoes. We want our kids to brush their teeth, take a shower, put your clothes away. And it creates some frustration at times. So while I'm not being an authority figure with your kid, it allows me to connect and allow them to be safe and talk about what's really going on and be honest themselves. If they're honest themselves in therapy, I can help them be honest with you. So it may take several sessions for uh, the therapist working with your daughter to get to that place where your daughter is able to articulate what her frustrations are, why she's upset, why she's giving you the cold shoulder or yelling at you or whatever that is, and maybe have her have some agency in figuring out a solution to the problem. So when they bring you into session, your daughter already has a, an understanding and a working idea of where she wants to go, some goals, which helps you jump on to help protect those goals and help support those goals. So it helps you guys both going in the same direction, thus reducing some of the tension, and anxiety, and helping you guys be more on the same team. Um, now, when I work with kids, I don't tell parents everything they say, um, but I will communicate with parents. And what's really important is that the par I understand the parents. It's really important that you feel your child's therapist understands you because you're a big part of this. You're, you know, Kids don't grow up in a vacuum. They grow up with parents. Parents are the biggest factor in a child's life, uh, positive or negative, usually a little bit of both because um, we're human too. So what I would recommend is make sure you're talking to this therapist, make sure this therapist understands your perspective. Now, I will share some, from time to time broad generalizations of what we're working on. For example, I may show, share with a parent, we're working on talking about family relationships or peer relationships or symptoms of anxiety, you know, something like that. I may not go into detail, I probably won't, because it's more important that your kid goes into de detail with you. I want your kid to feel empowered to share that with you and not go over her head. Because if I do go over her head, then it will betray any trust she has, not only with me, but the next five therapists she has. So it's really important that they maintain that trust. But again, the therapist you're working with, they should have some kind of communication with you, unless there's examples of you know abuse in the past, and maybe there, you know, there are some circumstances where a parent has been abusive or neglectful, and having them involved is detrimental 
and it's, your child needs to be in a stronger place to before that parent gets involved. I don't know if that's the situation here. It sounds like it's more just a relationship issue that needs to be uh, figured out. But there are times if a parent has been abusive that you know keeping them at a distance for a while is helpful for your kid to feel safe and strong to eventually bring you back in. Again, not an easy topic, not an easy thing to discuss, but these are the things that we're dealing with. Anyways, that is our question for today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in all year long. Thanks for tuning in for next year. Keep your questions coming. We love them. If you have a question, you can email us at tipsonteens at teentherapycenter.com or just message us right here on Facebook. Again, my name is Kent Toussaint at Teen Therapy Center and Challenge Teen Counseling. Wishing you all happy holidays, happy new year, and I'll see you on January 8th. Bye-bye.